everybody. Welcome back to Bear Ice. So, first competition of the Grand Prix season is in the books. Skate America took place this past weekend. Overall, it was a pretty good competition. There were a couple of moments that mm, kind of had me biting my nails and covering my eyes, but for the most part, it was really good. I watched everything. I watched the women, the men, the pairs, and the ice dance, and so I'm going to talk about the women, the men, the pairs, and the ice dance. Watched it all, might as well talk about it all. Winning the gold medal in the women's event was Sasha Trusova, which if you've been paying attention, probably not a shock to anybody. I think the biggest shock for her in this competition was the fact that she came in injured. Reports started coming through shortly after she arrived that she was actually battling a foot injury and that doing quads were causing her some pain. Now, I think the most concerning thing is the fact that when we kind of step back and look at it, all of the original AAA, as they were known, Alexandra Trusova, Anna Sherbakova, and Aliona Kosternaya, all of them have been injured or dealing with injuries heading into this Olympic season. Now, that's not necessarily newsworthy. It's just a little concerning seeing as how these girls are what I consider the beta testers of the bigger elements. So the quads and triple axles being a staple of the competition really got going when they entered the field. The question of whether or not doing quads at such a young age, that repetitive basically beating that your body is taking from that age on up, like what are the effects of that? How long can these girls continue to do these jumps before their bodies start breaking down? They're kind of the original testers of this. There was no data to say, oh, you shouldn't be jumping quads or jumping quads is fine because it hadn't been done before. So we'll have to see how this injury develops for Sasha, whether or not it's just her foot is sore and she'll be fine for her next competition or whether or not it becomes a bigger problem. The point of the matter was she was not at 100% here. Thankfully for her, she didn't necessarily need to be. Sasha at about 75% technically is still stronger than most people who are running at 100%. She was strong in the short program. Again, I really love this program on her. New dress looked fine to me, I guess. Very similar to uh, Anna Sherbakova's dress now that I think about it, but whatever. Again, with the free skate, everything was great. Um, I'm on the fence about that new dress. I, I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. So we'll just leave that at that. Rather than going for the five quads or four quads she usually has planned, she only did one quad, a quad Lutz off the top. It was gorgeous. She nailed it. And the rest of her jumps were quote unquote basic triples. She completed seven triple jumps. Everything was clean. She got a ding on her flip in her combo at the end. But I mean, other than that, she was clean. Honestly, seeing her do just regular triples gives me a bigger appreciation for how incredible she is in terms of her jumps. She just gets so much height and her rotation is so tight and so fast. It's really remarkable. She is probably the best female jumper I have ever seen in my life. I was just happy to see her compete because there were some reports that there had been some consideration of her possibly pulling out of the competition. The big thing was, of course, she was dealing with the injury. Sasha's not known for taking it easy. Naturally, going out there, she wanted to do all of the quads, but Thankfully, they decided to pull back and she was able to get it done with just the triples. Her next event is about three weeks away. It's NHK and that's taking place November 12th through the 14th. So hopefully that'll be enough time for her to rest up and be ready to go. Coming in second at this event was the other Russian, Daria Usasheva. I was pretty happy to see her play second, though I do think Third place finisher, Yu Young, had a case for silver. But overall, I think Daria definitely earned her medal here. She was amazing in the short program. Honestly, she had one of the better short programs in my mind. I just thought she was so completely absorbed in her performance. She really, really made a moment for herself and impressed. I mean, this is her debut on the senior level and... She debuted like a boss. Like, I was really impressed with her. I thought she was so beautiful. All of her jumps and everything were secure and easy. The spins were great. And she really, I think she reached the crowd. She really got to the crowd. In the free skate, she skated second to last. And I think for the most part, she did a good job. 
She got a couple of dings on her triple Lutzes, which was funny because in the short program, she definitely deserved a ding. I mean, that triple Lutz, the solo triple Lutz that she did, went off of a completely flat edge, but there was no call. But then again, I went and I looked through the protocols. Nobody got an edge call of any kind <laughs> in the short program. So I'm like, okay, if you're not going to call it for one, just don't call it for everybody. And I guess that's what they did. Daria ended up with two here, which did hurt her score a little bit. She lost some GOEs. And then also in the second half, I'm pretty sure she's supposed to have a triple flip, triple toe at some point, And she was not able to get it off. So she lost some points there as well. Overall, it was a good performance. Just the program just lacked a bit of that magic. The moment that she created in the short program, she wasn't necessarily able to recreate in the free skate. But overall, still, it was a great performance. Again, I'm trying to keep my head wrapped around the fact that she's a debuting senior. This is her first year. This is her first time on the Senior Grand Prix. And she did amazing. She really did. I think she's proven that she's definitely somebody that you're going to have to keep an eye on. Naturally, her teammates who are jumping the harder jumps, the quads and the triple axles, of course, those are going to be the people who are going to shine a bit more in terms of their scores. But... She's proven that even without those elements, she can put up a big fight. So I was really happy for her. I enjoy her skating. She reminds me a lot of Evgenia Medvedeva or even Anna Sherbakova in that when she skates, you can tell she's really feeling her music. She's into her performance. And I love that about her. So I was happy to see her win silver here. I wasn't quite sure if it should have been silver or bronze, but considering the strong short program she gave... And the fact that this free skate was pretty solid with the exception of a few little issues here or there. I guess her silver was well-deserved. Congratulations to Daria. Like Sasha, her second event is NHK Trophy. So she's got a couple of weeks to rest and recharge and then get ready to go back at it again. She's got a little bit more competition at NHK than she did here. But the good thing for her is if she can at least get any kind of medal, she has a really good shot of making the final. And that, in an Olympic year, is a really big deal. Coming in third and winning the bronze medal, Yu Young. I was so proud of her. I have to say, I've been waiting a long time to see her really turn it on. And I feel like she did that here, especially in the free skate. The short program was good, but not as good as it needed to be. She went for the triple axle. I'm very happy. It's something that she consistently goes for. But in this case, she fell on it. The triple axle only really works if you can stand up on it and rotate it. Because she fell, she lost half the base value of it, which was four points, plus another point she lost because of the mandatory deduction for the fall. I like the fact that she's branching out a little bit in the short program in terms of her music. There's not a war horse this time. It's something different. The war horse is there in the free skate, but I like that she's doing something different. That being said, I actually think I preferred her Romeo and Juliet short program a little bit more. I think her Romeo and Juliet just had a lot of drama, and for some reason that worked really well with her style of skating. Going into the free skate, she really was not that far off of the podium, even though she was in fifth place. Oh my goodness, she turned it out. Honestly, I feel like Young had the best free skate of everybody. I mean, the crowd were cheering. They were up on their feet before she was finished. She skated to Les Mis. <laughs> I am not a fan of Les Mis. I'm over Les Mis. Les Mis is like Carmen and Billie Eilish when it comes to music for me. I love Billie Eilish, but people just, they, they ran her into the ground over the past few years. I'm kind of sick of listening to her, but more on that a little later on. This program though, there was something about it. And I think the biggest thing was she brought it to life more. This program was such a departure for her because she performed like throughout the whole thing. My issue with Young has always been the fact that her performing is sometimes it like every now and then. On a few parts during the, the performance, she'll give a little smile. She'll give some indication that she's into what she's doing, but it usually lasts for like a split second and then it goes away and she's back to kind of being deadpan as she skates around the rink. Here, it really seemed like she was engaged 90% of the time she was out there and it was amazing. She opened up with the triple axle. It was great. Even though it was landed on the quarter, it was still clean to the naked eye and it basically set the tone for the rest of the program. 
she had a few issues in this free skate, but nothing that detracted from the overall performance. She did lose some points here because several of her jumps were landed on the quarter turn, which affected her GOE. And because Young jumps really big with a lot of speed, her GOE is actually pretty significant. So that's something she'll definitely want to clean up because had she not lost those points from the GOE, she'd have ended up second place easy here. Even with the minor mistakes, I think this is the best I have ever seen her. I was so happy for her. I really have been waiting for her to just kind of get her shit together, to be perfectly blunt. Like, she is such a good skater, and it just seems like she could never get everything to just click at the same time. So the fact that she was able to come out here, especially in the free skate, and deliver like that, I am really, really proud of her. Her second event is also in HK. It's funny how they're all grouped together and they're all competing against each other again. So she'll have another opportunity to go out there and hopefully nail that triple axel in the short program and clean up the errors in the free skate. If she can do that, she will give herself a good shot to get on the podium at NHK. Again, it's going to be a little more difficult. There's a couple more competitors there that she's going to have to get around. But if she can skate like that, her chances are looking really good. Finishing a very close fourth here was Kairi Sakamoto. Now, originally, my thought was she would probably be second in this event, and she was very close to getting there. I mean, if you look at the scores, 217, 216, 215, really the slightest little difference would have made the change in the score. She just so happened to just miss out on a medal here. For Kairi, she shot herself in the foot in the short program. She did really well up until the time for the combination. She went up, and rather than doing a triple flip, she did a double. Thankfully, she was able to tack the triple toe onto the end, so she still lost quite a few points, but not as many as if she had doubled it. Even with missing that whole triple jump, she still finished fourth. So I know had she landed that combination cleanly, she'd have easily been second right behind Trusova. She fought back really hard in the free skate, though. Again, I'm I'm on the fence about this program. I'm just, I'm really not feeling the spoken word thing. I noticed that with the ice dance. Like, for some reason, everybody's doing spoken word in their programs. And I'm, I'm not here for it. I don't really like it. I don't know if, like, a memo went out and everybody's like, hey, put spoken word in your, in your music this time. This is how you get the points. I don't like it. It's kind of like last season where everybody ended their program down on one knee with their head back. Like, can y'all get a little more creative, a little bit more original? Like, what's going on? Anyway, the good news was Carrie came back really strong in the free skate. She did have a couple of little issues here and there. She got a ding on her LUTs. Again, she did not get one in the short program, but like I said, the caller was taking a nap. He was apparently awake in the free skate, so she got the ding on the LUTs. And then she also lost a level on her spin at the end. Everything else was good. She really went out there and gave it her all, and I'm proud of her for not backing down. She went for it and alleviated some of the fears that have been batting around in my head for the past few days in terms of, do I need to worry about her? Clearly you don't, you know, the timing issue in the short program, not great, but the fact that she came back so well in the free lets me know that she is all there. So hopefully she'll do better at her next event. This one was close though. Honestly, she lost points on that final spin. I love crunching numbers. <laughs> so if you go back and take away the points that she got from the botch spin, give her just the base value and then maybe half a point in GOE, that would have been enough to put her ahead of Daria, which would have given her the silver medal here. So spins are important, people. I'm happy she was able to bounce back. I think she's in a good position now. Even though she didn't medal here, that's giving her good momentum going into her next event. Again, like everybody else, she will be competing at NHK Trophy. So that's actually a plus for her because she's going to be competing at home. Might give her a little bit of a boost. I think she's in a good position to come out fighting and hopefully try to get herself a medal there. As for everyone else, it was a pretty good competition. Senya Sinitsina, I didn't really give her that much attention in my preview. Probably should have. She finished the short program in third place. She wasn't as impressive in the free skate. I guess there's just, she is a debuting senior and there is some stuff about her skating that's going to have to 
mature. She's going to need more polish and more flow and everything. But for a debut, she hit over 205 points, finished fifth here. I thought she did a really great job. I was very happy for Amber Glenn. I mean, she delivered about as well as she could in this event. Her short program was pretty good. Her free skate was really good. The downside for the American women are they just aren't that competitive with most of the other countries. So even at her best, she's still just barely squeaking in over 200. The good news about that is she did well here. So if she can do well on her second one, She's going to be building that momentum, which will help her PCS to go up, which will help the judges to get more used to her skating. And hopefully that will increase her scores. For Amber, she did what she needed to do here. So I'm proud of her. Tiny goddess Satoko Miyahara came in seventh here overall. Not her best, but not terrible either. I came to the realization while she was skating that she's just too good for this sport. Let's just say that. <laughs> her skating overall is just so beautiful. No, she is not the best jumper, but everything else that she does is so beautiful. There's something that's just very throwback quality to the way that she skates in terms of the attention that she gives everything, every movement, every placement of her hand, her arm, her head, every emotion that she emotes, like everything is just so polished. And you don't see that pretty much in any other skater. And I think that's okay. She is one of the older competitors out there. She is one of the more seasoned competitors, probably in this entire group. I think she would be the senior competitor in this event in terms of how long she's been competing. And it shows. So no, she's not quite doing what she needs to do in terms of the jumps, but everything else is just beautiful. And I just, I appreciate that about her skating. I understand that it's not as competitive as it needs to be in terms of where we are with skating today, where so much emphasis is being put on the bigger elements, the jumps. And, you know, that is kind of what's driving the sport. And she doesn't really have that. So she's getting left behind a little bit. Even so, she's able to create those moments. Like she had a really great moment in the short program when she finished skating Everybody loves that short program so much. And I think the crowd really appreciates that about her. So not her best here, but hey, she hit 200 points and I enjoy watching her. So I'm happy for her. Yay, tiny goddess. I wanted to take a quick look at the men. Congrats to Vincent Joe. He went out there and killed it. Short program and free skate. I definitely think this is redemption for him after what happened at Worlds last year. Shoma Uno. Your short program outfit is amazing. Please take the top of that turn to a dress and give it to Rika Kahira. It was beautiful. I love the free skate as well. That edit of Bolero that they chose, I think it's so perfect for the Olympics and the program was gorgeous. Nathan did not win here. He ended up placing third. Actually, I think that's pretty good for him. He hasn't lost in a really long time. I think he needs to know what that feeling is so that he can get that hunger and that fire back to want to win. Hopefully, he'll take it in stride and he'll come out and kick ass at Skate Canada. A quick look at ice dance. It really has become probably my second favorite discipline in skating. I, there's something that speaks to the skating purist in me with everything being about the deep edges and emoting and the artistry. That is why I love ice dance so much. This was a really good competition. Madison Hubble, Zachary Donahue came in first here, just edging out Madison Chalk and Evan Bates. I get it. I, at first I didn't quite get Hubble and Donahue, but now that I've been able to watch a little bit more and learn a little bit more about ice dance, I see where they shine. They just have so much power so much power when they skate and I thought both of their programs were absolutely beautiful. I really loved their free skate. Madison Chalk and Evan Bates are still my favorite. I am still obsessed with the snake program that they did, but I really like the little alien program now. This one is pretty cool. I kind of see a theme going where they're, they're sticking to telling a story, but it works. It really works for them. And in terms of their rhythm dance, I will say theirs is the first Billie Eilish program that I've seen in a while that I actually really liked. Madison, I just, I have a girl crush on Madison. I think she's so gorgeous. And the way she gets into the character when she's performing is so fun to see. I love the green dress. I thought they were awesome. So really happy to see them come in second place.
Fournier Beaudry and Sorensen coming in third here from Canada. I enjoyed both of them as well. Overall, the ice dance competition was a lot of fun. Again, I've just really fallen in love with this discipline, so I'm excited to see more of it at the next event. I really enjoyed the pairs as well. Tarasova and Morozov ended up winning here. There's something that's just so secure and steady about them. The lifts were great. The throws were wonderful. I really enjoyed them. But Mira and Kihara were definitely my favorite. Their short program was gorgeous. They rebounded after that really bad fall on the throw triplets in the free skate and just came back. I, there's something about them that is, is they're endearing. I think it's the fact that Kihira always looks like he is just having the best time ever. I want to be as happy in life as Kihira looks because he's just constantly smiling. You could tell they were genuinely having a good time. Boykova and Kozlowski came in third here. I'm obsessed with her legs. Like she has the most beautiful extension and flexibility in her legs. I'm obsessed with her legs and her outfits. Like her, her dresses were gorgeous. They did not have the best of free skates. It was a little slow, a little sloppy in places. So they had to settle for third here, but I enjoyed them as well. That'll do it for Skate America. Like I said, overall, really great event. Great season opener. Second event, Skate Canada, is taking place at the end of this week. Really excited to see what's going to happen at that one. Go ahead on, comment below. Let me know what you thought of Skate America. Who did you love? Who didn't you love? What were you impressed by? What were you less than impressed by? As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel. I'm just getting started. I plan on doing this all season long. You don't want to miss it. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.